Welcome to our interview series, We Choose to Thrive, brought to you by Becky Norwood of The Woman I Love. We bring you stories of survivors who have chosen to heal, to thrive. If you are an abuse survivor and are starting or continuing your healing journey, these stories will provide hope, inspiration, and a knowingness that you are not alone. Join us in today's interview. Survivor of childhood sexual, emotional, religious, and physical abuse. Throughout my life, I was molested by my father at the age of four. It continued on, and when I was nine, I was, I was raped in front of my father by his drug dealer as a payment. And it continued. Um, everywhere I seemed to go um, to escape, I seemed to find more abuse. Um, I attended a church. Um, I ended up being raped by a member, uh, a man, member of the church that I attended, which resulted in a pregnancy and an abortion. And basically, my whole my whole life was kind of in a atmosphere of squalor abuse, drug addiction, alcoholism, and suicide. It seems like sometimes when we've grown up into this kind of environment, we attract the same things to our lives. The points, that's what, what happens. And I want our listeners to understand that many times when we're, especially when we've had this happen to us as a child, that's what we're familiar with, that's what we know. Yeah, that, that's, that's very true. And I, I think probably that is why I ended up in some of the situations I ended up in, not in any way saying that it was my fault or anything, but like you say, when you're in that atmosphere, you don't know anything else. And I think, you know, it ends up being the thing you're, you're most comfortable with. It takes a lot of years to understand our true essences and the, the real person that we are deep inside, especially when we've had no taste of anything else. Exactly. Exactly. Janet, where are you now in your healing process? You know, you look, you have a beautiful glow about you. You're, you, I know you've done, we've talked before, and I know you've done a lot of work for yourself to come into the healing and now thriving process. So where are you right now? Well, it's been about a year and a half since I basically admitted myself into a residential rehab called The Meadows. Um, I had been in many um, treatment centers before that dealt with the depression and the symptoms. This was the first place that dealt head on with the trauma. The, the deep stuff that was there causing so much of the disruption and the, the chaos in my life without even realizing it. So this has been probably one of the toughest years of my life, but also the most rewarding. Is that the most healing thing that you've done for yourself? I think it is. It was the first big thing I had ever done. I believe coming out of there, I had learned so many tools and so much information about how trauma works on the brain and how it is possible to repair some of those neuron pathways that were put into my brain for, from such a young age to actually, to be honest, I wouldn't have changed a thing in my past because it all led me to this moment. It, it led me to deal with it. It led me to becoming a person that forgives for my own benefit, um, everything that's happened to me, because that's the only way forward. And in doing that, it's allowed me to be freer to give back, to share my story, which is something I've only been brave enough to do perhaps maybe the last six months, publicly. That is such a key because I'm celebrating my 60th birthday this month and I'm just now having the courage to speak up. Yes. And it really doesn't matter. I've met young women, women that have been in their 20s and 30s when they speak up and I wish I had been among them. But the fact is that we're speaking now. And I think our, our world has changed a lot, giving people, yes. the younger ones, more options and more awareness and that's what this is all about is we want to create that awareness yeah so would you say you suffered mostly from low self-esteem um, yes I suffered what's really ironic is I went 
through so many years of therapy and treatment for the depression, um, prior to the Meadows, a therapist that I was seeing at the time introduced the idea of shame and how it affects you mm -hmm. and how it it's toxic. That that changed my life too. That that was like, oh my gosh, this is why I withdraw. This is why I shut down. This is why I go into this alone place because I'm filled with shame. That was a, a really important message to me. I found a graphic with a girl in sunglasses and one eye on the sunglasses and the shame that they don't see, the shame that they don't know. And it was so touching because in our healing process, when we understand the shame, when we understand the path to loving ourselves and the forgiveness and forgiving we do for ourselves. Absolutely. Yeah. You went to the meadows. Where is the meadows? If, if somebody want, was to want to check that out and it felt like they needed some sort of help. Right. It, I, I could not ever recommend it enough. It's in Wickenburg, Arizona. Um, it's a state-of-the-art facility. They have everything available to treat the trauma with, um, work, with survivor workshops, with sharing your story in a safe place, to a brain spa where you can go and actually learn how to retrain your brain. Um, and a key element in that whole experience was loving yourself, was accepting what happened and loving yourself despite it. Because I don't think we realize how much we do distract ourselves. It's a self-loathing. A self -loathing. Yes, exactly. So what words of wisdom would you have to offer to somebody just starting down this path? of healing, no matter what age they are, what words of wisdom would you share? Well, that's interesting that you say about the age, because that's the first thing I think I would say. I was in my 50s, I'm 56 now, and I felt like I was past the point where it would even be worth dealing with this stuff, but it's not. It, it You know, no matter what age you are, you need to get into a group, get into a safe place, anybody that you can start to share your story so you don't feel alone. That, that to me is the first thing. The second thing is that to, to realize that you can heal, that it, it doesn't matter how bad your trauma's been, there are ways to heal, tools to help you heal, and there is support, support there for you. Very good. So your life now, now that you've gone through this, are you feeling joyful? Are you feeling uh, like you're, you've got every reason to live and can contribute to our world? I absolutely do. I, I'm on the board of an organization that works tirelessly to prevent childhood sexual abuse. I have written my story. I have giving back that means everything to me. Mm -hmm. That is what gives what happened to me a purpose. And I, I also don't want people to think that there's still not ups and downs. I walked out of the meadows thinking I could, you know, change the world. And I still have that inside of me. But I have waves that what happened to me will never go away. And although I can heal from it, sometimes you have low periods. But the difference is I can get back up. There are triggers. There's, Absolutely. Lots of triggers. There's triggers. There's things that happen that sometimes will just come back and slap you upside the head. Exactly. But it's what we do about it. How long do we stay? Absolutely. There, there are things you can do. Yeah. And I'm a perfect example of that. Uh, so you, have you published your book? No, I have not. It's, it's ready to be looked at. I've had a couple people read it and are really interested in it. Seeing it published, but... Yeah, I'm kind of I'm kind of in that process. Very uh, good. Do you say that the telling of your story by in by putting it in writing has been had an impact of healing for you? Oh my gosh, it, it's it's funny. I think it's like doing a year of EMDR. <laughs> it was doing it in a way that was so healing, and I can actually talk about some of it now without I, I've processed it as I wrote it. So it's yes. very healing. Well, on behalf of those who will be watching this series, We Choose to Thrive, 
and it's our voices rising in unison to, to give a message of hope that we can heal, we can thrive in our tools, that we can have at our disposal. Thank you for having the courage to be a part of this and just know that it, it makes such a big difference because it's by our collective sharing that we will help to change our world and both of us and all those others that are volunteered to be on this project, we can be a force for change in our world and that's what we're doing. One step at a time. <laughs> well, I, I thank you very, very much for letting me be part of it for another avenue to share and hopefully help others in the same situation. Thank you very much. And before we close this, what organizations are you working with to you know, share your message? I'm working with SAVE. Um, it's a nonprofit, um, Sexual Abuse um, Forever Ended. I also work with Darkness to Light which is a great organization that spreads awareness of childhood sexual abuse. I'm a, a facilitator trained to give the stewards of children's training, which teaches all about that. I'm in the baby steps of forming a nonprofit of my own called Show Up for Children. Yeah, stuff, stuff like that. Beautiful <laughs> resources. This story was brought to you by The Woman I Love at www thewomanilove.com If you are starting down the path to healing, no matter what stage, our united message is that you are not alone. We do not want to live with a victim mentality. We choose to thrive, and as such, we are joining hands to spread the message that you too can heal and thrive. Will you join us as a force of change we need in our world? Only by healing, Growing strong and uniting, can we create the awareness of this terrible epidemic that is plaguing our world? We heal in many different ways. There is no one right way to heal. But the right thing to do is to heal. Heal for yourself, for your families, and for our world. Will you join us in this We Choose to Thrive revolution? Reach out to us at www dot the woman I love dot com. Also check out the incredible resources at www dot r a i n n dot org. And if you are actively facing abuse in this moment, do not delay. Seek out help in your local community immediately. Here is to your wellness, healing, and thriving.